the Green Crimp V8. You're watching Jaybird TV. The first route on the docket today is the V2, V3, the black holds in front of you. It's a really fun, druggy route up the overhang. And I was feeling pretty peppy at the beginning of this climbing session, so got the barrel roll. Do a barrel roll! Up to the beginning, and I'm scamping along pretty quickly there. I'm trying to do one time hand and foot placements. I'm smooth and steady. But I do climb a little more powerfully than perhaps the way intended. That's all good though. Still getting me properly warmed up. Still hitting those down climbs. Thank you so much for letting me know your opinion on those. I really appreciate the feedback. Of course, this is for you all. So thank you so much for sponsoring me with your time and mad love. So completing that, feeling pretty good, pretty strong today. Moving on to these pink holds. It's a V2, V3 that works its way out right and up the corner there. Now it traverses out. So it begins with two underclings, and this is a great set V2 for the spot. Some crimpier movement, it's very consistent, and had some fun movement. I love those three big pink holds. The way they look and the way they climb is really fun. So I do a big cross over here. Feels like a great stretch, and actually push my palm against the wall to then go up and hit the undercling and top this thing out right that beautiful beacon of light. All right. And the down climb here. Now moving on to a V6, V7, got the dab in there. Now this is the day and night difference beta route. Seriously, this is mind boggling to me because I consider myself to be a pretty good route reader for the most part. I'm pretty familiar with these setters and what they do, but this one had me stomped and you'll see why. So it begins down low and you hit that left hold and you have to match it, which is actually pretty rad. Move out to a small foot chip type crimp and then you're able to bump to the big hold around the corner and really shift your weight over. Here you get the left foot set down low and you actually use the features here. Top of that feature is great. The sides are good, but it's a lot of compression. So first I try and reach up and use those top holds and they are very slopey. It was very well set. You could not pull on them really, unless you were in the perfect position. So despite my best attempts there, I'm unable to get my right foot up. I was hoping to get it on that foot chip there, but I could not. So I look and assess. Give it another go from the start here. Once again, shifting your weight quite a lot here. Feels pretty rad. And working back into these features. Still feeling pretty stumped here. Not quite sure what to do. So I try the high right foot thinking that that might allow me to move my weight up, but I cannot hold those. So I begin talking to Rob, who is one of the setters, and this is his creation. So he's giving me some helpful pointers and explaining what he does here, telling me he gets his right foot on the bottom hold and then gets his left up to the foot chip. So I try yet again, my original beta. Just trying to see if I can get it to work. This felt the most intuitive to me to do it, but you'll see it is not the way to send this. So come down and do a little more fiddling. I'm trying to walk my feet up using that middle hold, but you'll see that it puts my weight up and away from the wall and I'm unable to get my left foot on and really keep close in. So here is Rob, he show me how it's done. So his beginning beta is rather similar to mine. But you'll see the way that he masterfully performs the section which I'm very much struggling with. So he goes around the corner. Then after getting his foot up, 
you'll see him really compress with the two features here. And then he gets his right foot down low, which allows him to keep his weight down low. And he can get set up with his left foot, then allowing him to get his right foot over to the feature and compresses with his legs as well before reaching his right hand over and leaning into that sloper, making it usable. And he moves his foot up even higher on the feature there. Now he can lay back his left hand, keep a straight arm and essentially do an assisted pistol squat, stand right up, hitting the second to last hold. And from there he can go up to finish. It was very satisfying to see this route done after struggling quite a lot on it. So mad shout out to Rob, give me some amazing beta, passing on that knowledge. So here we go, I am equipped. I certainly have this beginning sequence dialed in now. And I'm going to try it the way that Rob did it. So I am able to pace my right foot and get my left up. And then I just get my foot up to the feature and do the exact same layback. This move felt awesome. You're really extending your body and really leaning right with a left hold, which is super cool. And from there, smear my left foot and stand up. And from there, I'm able to top it out. So <laughs> pretty psyched, got the sound. The next route is the yellow V6 V7. And this route has a lot of crimps and underclings. The start was a little bit tricky as well. Really had to get your feet situated right. And you have some underclings and you really need to stand up into them. So standing up into the move, I'm able to get my left foot up and go left hand. Move my left foot up to a better hold, switch and then go out to the big yellow hold, which is a double undercling. Get a high foot there and stand up into it. And I'm able to go out left And there is a little hold. I go out right hand here. It might be tricky to see. Now where I was, I had to do a foot switch. I really didn't want to because of the size of the foot. I was pretty sure that my weight would cut out before I'd able to switch them out. And it was so. So I do give it another go here. This time I have a slightly better idea and I do know what the movement feels like. So standing into this, I once again go left, thankfully catch my weight there. Go out to the double undercling. And I actually push mantle with my right hand and get a high right foot. Then going into the right undercling and then out. So set up in the position that I want to be and that allows me to top it out. So cheers to that. Love getting those high feet, can really help me stand up through different moves, so. Next is these black holds. This is a very interesting route. Super fun, I did have one scary fall the first time I tried it, which is unfortunately not on film, but spooked me a little bit, but here we are coming back to it. Kind of fall out left and then stand up into that right hand and shift your weight around really quickly. So just trying in isolation after the fall there. The beginning move you push with your right hand and get really close to the wall and then you can see I fall out onto the left foot and left hand. From there push between those two holds and go up to the next quite slopey hold. Now there is a crimp guest on above me and then 
feels very far out left is another crimp and a foot way out there. The foot looks amazing, but matching that sloper for a foot is pretty sketchy. And that is actually where I had the fall originally. So I bail and have an idea getting my left foot really far out. So just feel what the move feels like from good holds. It does feel a bit like the splits, but hey, gotta get flexible sometimes. So starting it, falling out left, and going into the right hand. I'm excited to try out the stretchy beta here, the, the left foot way out there. Just managed to get my weight on it, and this is pretty spread out, so I had to push my left hand and work that right foot up there. And still, even with the left foot, felt a bit insecure. Thankfully, you can go out, grab that crimp, and then cross over for that finish. So that was a super cool route. I really liked it. Very fun to climb. Next, we're looking at those orange holds. So this works out with the similar features for the night and day difference beta V6. And you start and have those two holds facing op opposite directions. Bring your weight close into the wall. This is actually quite an interesting section here. So you need to get your left hand up the first of those two orange holds and then do a layback like move. And then really high feet help quite a bit here if I go right and then match that pinch the bottom of that sloper. We got Calvin with the camp. Yeah, what's up, my dude? Uh, the best part about that sometimes is I actually don't know until I'm editing and then voila, we got a homie on screen. So anyhow, just working through those last holds, boom, we got a top. And of course, trying to be graceful on that down climb. The next route that I'll be climbing on are those blue holds, that V4, V5, the really large hold, and then the smaller ones. Which actually feel pretty bomber, at least on these angles. Got a cool elevator door looking move there. I do love those double Gaston compression type moves, feels super cool. But anyhow, you hit this big blue hold and then get your feet kind of spanned out for matching and going out to two blue crimps on that first feature and then getting a double gas down moving your feet thankfully there's plenty of them get that nice flowy climbing and this allows you to walk your feet up and get into the double gas down here so sinking that I get a high foot there And then actually get my right foot pretty close in to reach over. Got a higher left foot, cross over, fall into that hold, and just pull up to finish. It's a pretty rad climb, I like that one quite a lot. And for the next few climbs, we're going to be moving right over to the prow. So looking at this orange V4, V5. Crimpy jugs up these features. Really fun climbing. I enjoy this one quite a lot. Very consistent. Nothing cruxy. Just pulling on those orange crimpy jugs. Do a nice hand foot match there and get a heel hook up. I like that feeling on the overhang of my body almost being kind of stretched out, but still maintaining body tension. Throwing a little drop knee there. Body almost comes totally sideways there, which feels pretty rad. And just going up to the finish. So voila, the orange V5 as well. I'm trying to include lots of climbs in these sets because there's so many amazing climbs on them. So. 
really enjoy just trying them all. Now those blue pockets start this V6, V7, which is a powerful route, pockets in the beginning, and then those slopers. Some are quite bomber, some are a little more challenging to use. But I do love the style in which they are set here. So then, moving to these two pockets, you cross over, grab that one, and then reach up to a pretty bomber hold here. Get your left toe in the pocket you used, match, and then go up right. Move my left foot up. And here I get a right foot on that good hold and do a pretty dynamic move. <laughs> Love the chalk coming off there. That's a cool, cool looking effect on it. And just really squeezing these slopers. They're not as good as I anticipated, but certainly usable. And boom, topping it out. With the send of the blue V6 V7, we are now moving on to the green crimp V8. This is an awesome route, sustained, lots of powerful crimpy movement. I would say the crux on this is actually power endurance. So will you have enough energy? Will you move smoothly enough? Will you have the right beta? And had some interesting changes in beta on this route. It's my very first go. Hitting that left hand, I then get my right foot on, and that makes falling into the right hand feel very challenging. So I immediately have a better idea, and I back flag my right foot, and that allows me to fall into that before moving up left, and getting a right foot up. And there's two green crimps there, I hit the bottom one, and I actually choose to match feet and get my right foot up in a better position to hit this next hold. I later find that I don't need to do so. And if that move out left, I got a left foot up there, just the left foot. And you'll see what I do here, which makes that move feel a bit easier. It takes a little bit of problem solving, but get that back flag in the beginning. Now this time I just go to the higher one, the second. It actually saves me some time. And I don't move my foot except to get my right foot higher. And then I heel hook with my left because there is a crimp underneath as well. And that kind of froggy heel hook feels great. Here I kept the left foot on and tried to go up left, which was a mistake. <laughs> There's a better beta and then it's going up right. So once again from the start, hit the left crimp, back flag, fall into the right. Left hand up from there, get the right foot on and bear down, hit the higher of the two. Here I walk my left foot up to get my right on and get that left heel up to the left crimp. Now this time I get my right foot on and flag out left and go up right. And that is a much better, much better choice. And from here I keep my feet low, go out right and then lean to cross under and hit these dishes. Dishes feel pretty good, but they are a bit slopey. And that left one is particularly slopey at the bottom. Now that right crossover was difficult and I was pretty tired. However, I certainly have much better beta. And this is over a few different sessions and days, but I really do make some improvements on it. And interestingly enough, a lot of people said it was as challenging as the green sloper V8 to the left, which was the last video I put out. That one came much more easily to me. This one really felt difficult. It's a sign that I need to start working my finger strength. And hey, we got support from Mike Beanick here. We got mad love in the gym. So I'm able to get back to those dishes and he's cheering me on. Definitely brings out a little bit of grit, makes me try harder. I'm able to stick that right hand and leaning to get the left felt hard. My feet came out, getting tired, but appreciate the support. <laughs> so over the next few tries, I pretty much repeatedly fall at those two dishes. Trying in isolation, it didn't feel hard, but from the beginning, I definitely get tired and was unable to lock it down. What I do realize is that getting my left hand higher on the dish does help, and that starts improving my chances. But finally, the magic go. Now this was the beginning of my session this day. So I'm feeling fresh, 
I'm moving quickly and efficiently, trying to keep open-handed when possible so I don't spend the extra time closing the crimp. It did feel great to be fresh on this. Really flagging out left, hitting these holds, and I do move my feet up here before hitting the right and crossing under. Now this did feel good here because I had much more energy than normal, and I also moved my left hand higher up in that dish. This allows me to hit the bottom right hand and have enough energy to pull up and hit the next. I didn't quite know what to do here, so I just went up right again, and it stuck, so. Cheers to that, a top out on the Green Crimp V8. I hope you enjoyed everything today. Thank you so much for watching, I appreciate the support. Mad love, peace.